978. Previously on T-Man 978. <laughs> T Man 978 Chill Review. Hello, everyone. T Man 978. Welcome to another Chill Review. This time it's going to be the Netflix Transformers, well, War for Cybertron Trilogy Transformers, Elita One. She is a Walmart exclusive. Yay for her and packaging. But anywho, starting in vehicle mode again, just like I did with. Lifeline, because I've already reviewed this mold a couple times. In fact, let's just get it out the way right now. Pretty identical. They did not paint here. They didn't paint that. They didn't paint this backside either. So she has the least amount of paint on her vehicle mode as compared to these. This one has the best color scheme because these gray doors should have been on RC, but they are not. So, yeah, here are the rears. Here's the undercarriage. All the same, except you'll see more of this in robot mode. But there's a lot of retooling up in the torso, the shoulders, and our head. But everything else is the same. Transformation, not doing because I already showed that off a couple times. Basically, you see what needs to happen. You need to put the arms back there, put the legs right here, and wrap her car body around her. Getting these legs into place is annoying because it's hard to get this under there. And just snapping this these panels right here, which are very thin, getting them to stay together is difficult. I don't remember it being difficult the first time I did RC, but... um. Yeah, now when I transform it, if you want to get these legs flush under there so the car can roll, it seems like it pushes on these panels the wrong way. So there's that. Now here comes a ton of comparisons because I have a whole bunch of car modes lying around. Same size as Generations RC. Studio Series Bumblebee, pretty much the same size. Runabout. It's pretty close. Prowl. Pretty close. Sunstreaker. Mm -hmm. Chromia. Chromia is a little bit longer. And Chromia is actually on the show in this mode right here. So there's that. Here is Pod of Prime's Elita One, who changed into you in. Earth style eyes jet, I guess, with these ugly stickers on there. But of course, since she's a Voyager class and a Combiner Wars Voyager class, which is bigger than current day Voyager class, it's it's big appropriately. And here is Optimus Prime from Transformer Siege. And I doubt if I'm going to transform him for the robot mode comparison, but here is Earthrise Optimus Prime. Here's Earthrise Optimus Prime with the trailer. And let's see if she can actually fit in there. Not, not really. So there you are with that. Stay tuned for robot mode. Wait, one more. Since Bumblebee is her wave mate. Might as well get this Bumblebee action up in here. And if things are clippy or jittery in this video, uh, I remember why I stopped recording in 4K. Because I, I, I just need a new camera at this point. All right, she's now currently a robot, but I forgot to go over the fact that her gun can store in the front of the vehicle mode just like this. And I need to correct something. I was talking about her paint budget. The paint that's not on the car mode is on the robot mode. So as you can see right here, they fully painted her thighs, like fully. And she has a lot of paint right there. And unlike 
lifeline or RC, they went ahead and they painted her back side right there. They just stopped the paint on the front on RC and lifeline. But they kind of did the same deal with her head up here. So, yeah. And mine has an unfortunate paint blemish where there's some extra br brown paint right there. Unfortunately, I guess it went from the face to there somehow. But look at these details. I love the face sculpt. And the detail like around the eyes, it looks dark around the eyes. And I like how shiny the paint looks. Here's the back of her head. Yeah, her chest is more rounded and more breast-like than even RC. And oh yeah, another thing I need to mention. If you need to see the transformations, you can check out my RC video. I believe I do the transformations both ways. If I didn't, in my Paradron Medic review with Lifeline, I do start from Karma. But, yeah. All right. Here's this comparison. So you can see they're roughly the same height. I don't know. Elita 1, the way I'm looking at her, it almost looks like her shoulders are a little bit higher. But, and her eye line looks to be a little tiny bit higher. But, I don't know. I might be saying things. It has, it has to be the same size because they transform the same way. And it has the same exact legs. But the differences in the molding is the whole torso, the whole body is completely different. Like, you see the hip sculpting? Let me bring them closer. The hip sculpting is different. The crotch sculpting, the stomach, the breastplate, like I mentioned, the shoulders are different. But the arms are the same. And, of course, the head is different. And her head, unlike with Lifeline and RC... I can tell that the head is on a ball joint and I can do that and I can I can make the head move up and down but unfortunately there seems to be like a natural stopping point like for there and right there and mine seems to want to be looking off to the left and when I let get it centered and let go she turns back to the freaking left because of that natural stopping point which is annoying Shoulders only go that far out on her because she is retooled. RC and Lifeline do not... If, if there is a ball joint in there, I can't make the head look up or down at all. And their shoulders can go all the way up because they're molded differently. Here is the gun once again, transparent, just like Lifeline. It's not fully clear. 100% clear transparent. But since she's supposed to be a pacifist, let's give Alita one both guns. So, yeah, she can be a super tough guy. But, yeah, Lifeline and Alita one definitely got the love when it comes to paint. They even have the lips painted, unlike RC, which I definitely complained about. Lifeline feels a little bit better quality wise than RC, but Elita One definitely feels the most tight. Like RC's legs are just freaking loose, especially in the knees and the ankles, which makes getting her standing up frustrating. But Elita One's thighs are tight, especially right here because of the paint here and in this mid joint right there. Now, none of them you can hold by the, the legs here and get them to stand up. But she drops way less easy than them. And her ankles are, are definitely tighter. So let's finish the articulation. Arms do that, do that, swivel. Elbow bends more than 90 degrees. The wrist goes out. I still don't like the sculpting of the hands on this. You can rotate the waist. And maybe the back. Mm, I think even this is different. Yeah, that's even sculpted different back there. But you can see the stand port right there. So if you have a Banda Tomashi stage act. This stupid thing fell off right here. Off the back of her car. 
Alita One has that problem in RC. What I'm probably going to do, because you can't really use this as a real weapon, I'm going to probably glue that down. I don't know why they Hasbro didn't do that, or Takara told me. But the legs go out to there. They kick forward. Look like that. Kick back all the way, but you got the backpack kibble. Swivel right here, which is kind of necessary because it covers that joint. Swivels here, bends double jointedly, foot goes forward a bit, back all the way, and you get a slight ankle pivot that locks right there, just like the other two. Oh, yeah, this pegs into the here way tighter than Lifeline and RC. I don't know what they changed. So you have to actually put some effort into unpegging that, which is good. Here, if you click this, you can slide this off, just like on RC and Lifeline. And now she has a more streamlined back and doesn't have a huge backpack and it's way better looking than all this. But to be honest with you, I am used to that backpack now. I didn't think I would be. I'm used to it being there. Like it doesn't even bother me anymore for whatever reason. And of course, with this, we can rotate this like that. Shove that down. And it can work as some type of hoverboard. They put the little pegs there. So you can put the feet here. And now she can hover into battle. Because Autobots can't fly unless they're Decepticons turned Autobot like Jetfire. So, can points before I forget holds the gun like trash drives me crazy those hands should have been retooled and now comes your parade of size comparisons here is power to prime alita one right there head mold is a bit stylized and different her combiner head looks a little bit more like this so i'm probably going to be forced to transform that but anyway here is Optimus Prime from Siege. You can see she's beefier and chunkier than him, but thank you, Lifeline, for that. She's a real lifeline. You see that? But there's this right here, which was she just tall in the show? I know she was slightly shorter, but I think she was up to here, like a hot, a, a, like a height that Hot Rod should be next to her. Here's Soundwave right there. So still taller. Here's Jetfire since he stayed on the planet with her. There you go with that. He wasn't that much taller on the show. They shrunk his height in the show. Bumblebee movie Shatter. Ultra Magnus from Siege. Here are some of her Autobot companions, female companions from the episode she debuted on the cartoon. Um, they're slightly taller because Otter Proms are bigger. Seeds shrink a little bit. Here's Slipstream and Nightbird right there. This shows you that Generations wasn't always tall. Combiner Wars were a little bit bigger than some of those Generations figures. And here are the Combiner Wars Rust Renegades. Oh, well, yeah. These were Combiner Wars, right? And not Titans Return. Yeah, I don't think they had any combiners in Titans Return. All right, here is the combiner head. It does have the wings on there that this is lacking. So I guess they streamlined her head and changed her for the Netflix series. But anywho, overall thoughts on her. She's not too spectacular, but she's good. I, I don't have too many complaints with her. I definitely feel like she's better than RC besides not being able to make the shoulders go out more than that unless you rotate the arms like out to the side. Then she can point outward. I just still don't like the way the hands hold the guns. I don't like the guns being transparent and I don't like the way the legs transform in car mode. But yeah, due to her posability, I mean, she can get into some good poses and whatnot i don't know why if they retool this mold in the future please for the love of 
everything. They put a pin in there. They put extra effort to put a pin in here for these inward outward wrist. That doesn't help the transformation at all. I don't know why they went with this. This should have been. I would take a ball joint and hand hand on a ball joint that plugs into a socket, so you can get some side to side motion plus rotate. Or if they don't want to do that, give her a rotating wrist. If she had that and like being greedy and extra, if the body upper body attached to the lower body with a ball joint instead of a a mushroom pig, then she could have had like some sort of ab crunch. That would have been cool. But yeah, they didn't do none of that. As is though, it's still a good figure. Can't complain about it. And she definitely looks good to me. Make sure yours doesn't have extra paint blemishes like mine does. Anywho, thank you for watching this video. Until next time. T Man 978 out of here. Click, click the videos. Click the fing videos, baby. Click, click the videos. You should really click these videos. Click, click the videos. Click those fing videos, baby. Click, click the videos. You really should click those videos. Click that shit.